Hi, uh, awesome. I got Tommy Ledford and Justin Pullen here um, out of the Pioneer Coach Driver Fleet. They're two of my drivers that get the most um, compliments on how smooth of drivers they are. And I figured this would benefit, you know, because it really is about passing on what we know to the next generation. I never started off smooth. It wasn't, you know, I had a driver, Bobby Ed Edwards, but although I did have, I lived on a bus, so I kind of knew what I didn't want back there, but I learned the techniques from veteran drivers, you know, who would share the information and, hey man, how do you do that? And learning not to run with the Jake break and learning to let yourself, you know, idle off the starts and that kind of stuff. So it, just because you two get the most, compliments from tours i wanted to pick your brain and hopefully have you guys share some of the tips and tricks you have for achieving that wax on wax off smoothness of the drive and then and and some people are under the misconception that smooth is slow when it really isn't sometimes you can go the speed limit or four above depending on the road conditions and still be smooth uh, advances. So that's why I wanted to kind of um, do this little video and then, you know, share it on my CDO Platinum platform there. So uh, let's let's get this started. Tommy, first we'll stop talk about how did you get in the entertainment industry? What was your CDL experience prior? And then how did you develop to where you're at now? Well, I started was a friend who owned some charter buses. Then he bought three entertainer buses and leased them on to Hootie and the Blowfish. So okay. I was working for Roadway Express and I started helping him on weekends just as a giggles, you know, just to help him out every now and then. And it got to where, you know, it was got to be a every weekend thing, you know. And I was having to take off from a regular job. But anyway, with that lease ended, I took all three buses to Chip Huffman. Oh. That's how I got hooked up in Nashville. Mm. Chip says, you know, help me some on weekends. And it just, you know, it just snowballed. Yeah. I worked part time for several years for Chip, but I was trying to get my retirement done. But I was taking off. Well, he'll tell you, I was doing leave of absence to do Amy Lou Harris because she liked the way I drove and like me do her tours and stuff, you know, and there are several people like that. Well, Blake Shelton, Darrell Wally, you know, and I was working more on buses than I was my trucks. Right. So what is, okay, they like the way you drive. What What is your mindset when you're driving an entertainer coach? Well, the big thing is, you know, smooth. And back in, we were driving the old Eagles and the XL, you know, the XL, you know, the big ones. Yep. And, uh, Really, the XLs rode pretty good over the Eagles. Mm -hmm. But you still, you know, one, the guy told me, he said, look, you don't drive these like a truck. You don't drive them like a CD coach because you always got somebody back there with a glass of wine or beer or they're trying to sleep. And uh, the biggest thing, he says, don't be slamming on brakes. So I want to be, I look at the stoplights when I'm coming up. I act like they're going to be turning red any time. Yeah. I try not to run up on, I mean, sometimes it's going to happen. But most time I'm trying to be very careful about stuff like that. Like if you see a stale green, you're going up. Right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a while, it may be changing. And I try not to run up to beat it or nothing because then you're going to have to slam on brakes. And like when you're getting off the exits, if it says 30, I may be do 20. You know what I'm saying? It's just according yeah. how it's laid out, you know. Yeah. Now, you talk about, I try to take it easy around towns, especially in town. And there's places when you get on the road, you can make your time up. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you can sit there and kick it on up there. But when you're in town or in a lot of traffic, I always try to keep me three or four buses ahead of me so I don't have to come up our slam on brakes. Right. It's especially you, in traffic. Well, you pick your spots where right. you see, okay, you look on the GPS, you go, this is pretty straight ahead road and it's not too bad. Do you usually ride in the left or the right or do you just adjust? No, how the traffic is. Huh? You know, 
according to how the traffic is. A lot of times I'll get the left lane if it's smoother, but when you start holding up traffic, that's when you start pissing people off and they blowing horns and you know, you know how it gets. You get the fingers a lot. Yeah. And especially like going into truck stops, everybody's trying to take it easy. Uh, you know, you get flipped off and stuff, but you know, that's just the way it is. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Hey, John, well, if they see it, they don't want to flip me off too much, you know. No, I get it. Hey, Justin, uh, to you now, how did you get in this industry? Like, you know, what brought you in here? And uh, yeah, how'd you get your start? Man, it was a it was a fluke thing. I just never really thought about driving entertainer coaches, and it just kind of fell into place. Hauling cattle, knew a guy that knew a guy, and thought it'd be an interesting interesting thing to get into. Uh, Sammy Garcia mm -hmm. with uh, Clay Walker at the time. <clears throat> the guy I met hauling cattle just knew J.R. Rodriguez. Yeah. And those two knew, knew each other. And Clay was looking for a band bus driver at the time and got my CDL or I got, I had my CDL, a got my passenger and school bus to get that passenger endorsement. Mm -hmm. Got it on a, I don't know, Wednesday. I was on a plane Friday. Wow. And just kind of got thrown into it. Yeah. And Sammy and Clay pretty much taught me what I need to know about driving a bus. Right. How to drive smooth. I, I got to interject because sometimes the worst compliment that any tour manager would ever give is like, where'd you find this freaking call uh, catalog? <laughs> Like that, it's been a, like a thing. So, like, it's real interesting that that's actually where you came from, and here you are, like one of the most complimented smooth drivers. So, what did you have to unteach yourself from that other job that you started at? And what did you? What are the good points that you taught yourself how to be that smooth wax on wax off driver? Well, you, you had I had to relearn that you don't have to fly everywhere you go mm -hmm. corners it's the same thing like hauling cattle you've got live cargo behind you and any any massive movement on a steering wheel what you feel as a small movement will be a major movement behind you yeah you remember you got people standing up like i said you got wine glasses and what have you not a lot of these guys don't like to drink out of paper stuff. Mm -hmm. So unless you want to continuously clean up glasses and buy glasses because you broke them or cleared a counter, you've got to adapt. And you probably wouldn't last very long on the tour, though. <laughs> no, no, you sure wouldn't. Uh, as far as as far as everything else, man, I I use 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 my GPS quite a bit. Uh, not necessarily getting into places. Yeah, it's helpful. But I set mine about two miles out to see two miles ahead of me. Okay. Got a straight stretch of road. There's going to be a corner coming up. Glance at it from time to time. You know, make sure you're not sneaking up on that corner. That way you can feather it in and, and lean the bus the right way to come into that corner. Right. And feather back out of it to stand it back up you both both of you this goes to both y'all don't drive with your engine brakes on do you absolutely yeah perfect absolutely not i've heard some, the, some complaints of some drivers that do that that's the biggest thing i've noticed with a lot of these new drivers they want to drive with that gate brake on all the time Take they want to cruise control all the time right and then once you let off that cruise, you got to hit the brake, then you're jerking it. Yeah. I don't never use my cruise unless I'm on a long straightaway. Yeah. I used to use my cruise, but anytime I, I, I would come in and out of it, but when I go out of it, I usually feathered just a little bit of speed, took it off, feathered back, uh, right. finding that technique of doing it and never use the engine. The only time I'd use an engine brake is I was really needed it for going down the hill. And chances are I wasn't in the right gear, <laughs> but like when I was actually going into it, but yeah, it's so 
let's talk about that driving in like Justin you mentioned something about I didn't think you didn't use the word carve but you said feather into something yeah so what I was taught you know when I first started is don't stay at the same speed coming into a corner mm -hmm. you want to lean that when you you know if it's a left-hand corner and you let out of it and you start that corner that bus is going to lean to the right right you hit the apex of that corner go ahead and get into it just a little bit to start standing that bus back up so they don't feel the back side of that corner right i love and, explaining it yeah and it, it's it's it takes a minute to figure out where the apex of corners are yeah but once you figure it out it's i mean that's something you can't really explain once you figure out where that apex in any corner is right and you stand that bus back up do you find your bus has a certain personality that you're used to now and you kind of know absolutely it, every bus no matter if it's if it, bus you're on all the time mm -hmm. or if you're filling in for somebody it could be the sister bus with a different vent number that's just one number different mm -hmm. but it bus is going to have its own demon that you have to figure out where you're taming it at right that's a good 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 analogy there so so we're rolling down the road you're cutting you're feathering into the apex Tommy, like, how, do you do that same thing that Justin was saying, like pull out your GPS so you can see further ahead and kind of get it? Oh, huh? Uh, back and all. Yeah. Yeah. I do the same things Justin does. I always look that before you get into the corner, I'm already already backed off of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So is that why we don't use the Jeep or the cruise control a lot? Because we would have to be getting in and out of it. How do you teach a guy not to be in and off the, because that's the other complaint I get some from some new drivers. Is there on the fuel, off the fuel, on, and the people in the back are feeling this? Well, you know, I when I take off, I just sort of ease it. I don't hit, I've, I've seen some of these guys just jam on it, take off. Right. I don't. I let the bus sort of creep off itself. Uh, same way going into curves, you know what I'm saying? I just ease on. I don't be. Yeah. And once I get straight out, I don't just floor it. You know, I get my speed back up. You know, yeah. gradually. Yeah, I get it. And don't jerk the bus that way. You know what I'm saying? You're not jerking them around. Right. That's almost like that. I did a video a while back on what I used to do is the 10 Mississippi for changing lanes, so I'm not just changing lanes i'm like one one thousand two one thousand three you know with the blinker and then once i get past it's well you know i do that so that they don't notice it i i know that takes a lot of patience because some guys especially the newer ones are just thinking oh i got an opening and then they roll it back in and everybody's like whoa dude what are you doing so justin are you the sa same idea i guess with the talking about the on off the the fuel pedal um, because you're planning way ahead, you're very gentle with your that right foot. Absolutely, you, you got to be in. When I say feather and gentle, uh -huh. there's a difference between feathering constantly mm -hmm. and just in and out of the fuel, or being steady and uh -huh. smooth. Yeah. When you're on the highway and it's a straight stretch of road, you want to be steady with that fuel. You don't want to be constantly on, off, on, off. Right. Because they're going to feel it in the back and then something else is you're probably going to be pulled off tour. Um, as far as, you know, just being easy with everything you want to, you want to get out of the mentality of if you're not first, you're last. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. get the mentality of, I don't care when I get there as long as I'm on time and safe. Right. And I achieved a smooth ride and everyone was sleeping. Correct. And, you know, especially coming into parking lots, man, just parking lots are the worst. Right. Truck stop lots, hotel parking lots, venue parking lots. That's the easiest place you're going to wake somebody up at. So let's talk about that. Yeah, that's great. We've rolled down the highway. You got this nice smoothness going. Now we're we're pulling off the highway. 
you're coming into your clover leaf or whatever. Uh, Tommy mentioned, you know, 10 miles an hour less than or whatever. I guess that depends on conditions if it's raining or snowy or whatever, but still way slower than what the, what the posted is. So we're getting off. Run, run, run a scenario like that. Justin. Well, you're just once you say you get off the interstate, you know, there is a clover leaf. 90% of your clover leaves in the U.S. or Canada are at 25 mile an hour. 25 mile an hour is way too fast to come around a clover leaf. You want to be doing about 15. Makes the bus stand straight. You don't very, very bad lean on a 25 mile an hour corner. Mm -hmm. uh, and just coming up to a stop sign, you just you don't want to jam on the brakes. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? Like you see a stop sign, I guess. Well, you're basically your foot isn't even on the fuel. You're kind of like an idle. Right. Feathering over your brake. Is this how we're doing it? Yes. We're feathering over the brake uh, <laughs> and and applying just enough pressure to get a a smooth touching of the brake. Yeah. Uh, and to, to bring you to a complete stop and then, you know, let off the brake and just kind of coast around that corner after the stop sign. When you make your left or right, mm -hmm. you let off that brake and coast around that corner. Right. You don't fuel, you don't throw the fuel to it coming out of that corner. Yeah. Or coming I'm hearing a lot of patience is needed as Absolutely. a senior coach driver. And, and that's what you teach these new people. It's, it's a, you have to be patient. This is about slow, smooth driving, not just like, hey, I got to get from A to B. Let's go. Right. And say say you pull into a parking lot at a truck stop. Truck stops are worse. They're always rough. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah. There's yeah. there's no easy way about it. And uh -huh. you got to take time in them. Yeah, you're going to have, uh, you know, Freddie Freight haulers hauling around you because that's what they know to do. Right. And go ahead. You've got to have the mentality mentality of go ahead. You're going to do what you're going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Right. Uh, avoid as many bumps because, you know, when you're coming into that parking lot, man, the headlights, you can see dips and bumps and everything with shadows in the parking lot. You know, try to avoid as much as possible try to pick a line that's going to be the smoothest, mm -hmm. but still creep. And if you see a major pothole that you can't avoid, man, just kind of slow down to a dead crawl and let those wheels fall in and climb themselves out. That's a really good point. Yeah. Cause there are some really bad truck stops. I remember I've gone to where they got literal can canyons in them. And oh, yeah. you, lose a whole bus in them. Huh? you could lose a whole bus in some of them. <laughs> yeah. but yeah it's something totally patience tommy i guess it's the same with you going into a a truck stop and like yeah. let's, let's talk about that but let's back up a little bit we're coming up like say we're fueling um i know there's some tricks on fueling depending on if you're running the bus air or the roof airs or you're running both um so that it doesn't smell like fuel tommy take us through that well yeah i've always been taught years ago cut the bus air off run the generator when you fuel it yeah because that does not suck into the i mean and i'm surprised people still do that i mean i thought that was a given don't never run your bus air when yeah. you fuel it. the ones that are watching this are figuring this out and do you start your generate if you're not running the generator while you're rolling to save fuel um i used to start it up about 15 20 minutes before i knew i was going to stop for fuel you is that the same idea? I do. Most time what I do is before I get off the exit. So I crank it while I'm going down the road and it don't make that jerking. Okay. Since I crank it, I'm still going down the road, like you say, about five minutes before I get off. Yeah. Crank the generator. And I go ahead and shut the bus air off as soon as I feel the air conditioners kick in. Right, because it takes them a second. Yeah. Takes, them, takes them a little bit. And then when I get stopped, trying to, I'll cut my bus air off. Right. And, I mean, that's the way I take care of that. You right. know. And then I will, if I'm most, 
ninety percent of my people want their roof fires working. Yeah. So I don't run a bus out of both, you know. Yeah, I've been noticing that too a lot is because a lot of the like different clients want control of their zones. Uh, that that's that's ninety percent of my want to control it, but if you I do run it when I get down the road, I go ahead and cut the bus air on. Yeah. Once it starts cooling, then I'll cut the generator off so they don't feel it. Yeah. And shake. It. And that's the same with with the black water as well, whether you're dumping it at a flying J or or whatever. It's the same same ideas. Don't. Oh. Because what what side? Because I from what I've heard, I think doesn't it suck in from the the driver's side or passenger side? The driver's side. Driver side. Driver side that it's sucking up from. Yeah. yeah, that's where you fan most. You know, you fan for you bus air. Right. Yeah, I get. I get. Uh, it. I like we we just dumped our toys. You know, we on Dave Matthews we bring Porter John out. Okay, they bring a Porter John out. Yeah, we do it. About every other show. Very, very Sometimes, good. I mean, they, we didn't have enough of a generator, but you still going to smell it a yeah. little bit. You know? Yeah. It's sitting still like that. You, you know what I'm saying? When you sit still like that, regardless if you got the bus running, yeah. the, way that, the way our tanks are, mm -hmm. so it just seems like it comes back a little bit. Yeah. Hey, here's another thing. Like, so, so we've done the fueling up. We're getting ready to go back out. We roll back. Is I guess obviously it's the same technique of getting onto the on ramp, going like what Justin was saying, the feathering and jet roll up to speed on slow, not hammering it down. I know some of the rookie people will just step into it and try yeah. into traffic, um, but it, it's all about smooth. It's about rolling into that so we're rolling down the road you same same techniques now we're it's like five o'clock in the morning we're getting ready to pull off and we're going to the venue take uh justin take me on that you getting in you know you always want to drive it doesn't matter where you're at what you're doing who you're with you always want to drive like there's a full cup of coffee sitting on your dash yeah okay perfect you don't so when you're getting off, do the same thing as you did going into the truck stop. Mm -hmm. Be extra cautious. Do a little bit under the speed limit. You're getting ready to get off the interstate. Know in your head. Keep looking, you know, look back and forth at that GPS. Know how far you've got yep. to that. Prepare yourself to get off at that exit. Get off that exit. Do the same feathering. Easy to the stop sign. Easy to the red light. You get to a red light. And there's traffic at five o'clock in the morning. You're going to guarantee there's traffic somewhere because all these shows are in a major city. Yeah. You pull up to a red light and they, you know, everybody knows a car's inch forward every time they can. Yes. Don't inch forward with them. Stay put because you ain't going to get any further than they are. Right. Nice. And That's great. Stop and go forward and stop again, that's a jerk in motion behind you. Excellent. And feel that over them axles because them bags, the airbags are continuously working. And you don't, you don't want to do that. So you stay put, let that green light go. You ease off the brake and let it roll. Ease, roll through your corner, where, whichever way you're going, and go on. Yeah. Get into a venue kind of eyeball where you're going there's you know most of the time the sometimes the, the entrance to that venue is real smooth and sometimes there's going to be a uh, a little dip be or a little raise in that little entrance yeah take time don't don't gas on it. don't do nothing just let it roll in ease with the brake let it roll up let the front wheels roll up to that bump or that valley that you're going through and once they either get to that bump give it a little bit to go over it or when they get to the top side of that valley give it a little bit to get out of that valley and just let it roll some more and let the back wheels kind of catch and ease with it that way yeah you don't rock the bus back and forth trying to do all this other mess that people try to do 
I love what you're saying. And then the, the, the big thing here too, is we have to remember the drivers may be tired by this time. You might, have, this might be the back end of a nine hour run and you may be tired, but the, that fact is this is probably the most, one of the more important things is coming into that city and making sure all those tools you have for being a smooth driver are applied, especially at the back end of getting into a venue. Correct. That's that's one thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure we're as sharp at hour one as we are at hour nine. We've got to make sure we can perform the same job from start to finish. And that doesn't just include driving. That includes getting up out of your seat, doing your trash if you need to, cleaning the front lounge, yep. and all your responsibilities that you're you're required to do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'm glad you brought that. Performing them well and and keeping the client happy, just taking care of business. Yeah. Hey, Tommy. So I'm going to go to you now. On so we follow Justin. We're we're in at the venue. We've gone slow over the hump and stuff. Uh, one, you probably have done your homework, or you should have done your homework to know the venue you're getting into. Possibly the tour manager gave you parking a parking grid. Sometimes they don't, but if they don't, you got to figure that out. So we're with Tommy now he's behind Justin and you're going to be the first one. So like, let's talk about like you're setting up to where you're backing into and how do you do that? Like, how's your backing? What you got passengers sleeping. It's five 30 in the morning. You, well, you, you really want to know about that before you leave going there. Yeah. Done, done your homework. A lot of these venues, like me and Justin, we've been to a lot. We sort of know how the parking is, but you always want like you always want the artist bus the closest. Right. That's that's regardless. So if I got the crew, I know I'm gonna be parking over here at the next slot. Right. You know. Uh, and if you on a multi bus tour, you know you, you talk it out. Well, I want bus so and so here or there. Yeah. Leave. So when you get there, you ain't just parking and jumping around, moving the buses around 10 times. You know what I'm saying? Good point. Yeah. Uh, you sort of have an idea of how you're going to be parked when you get there. Yeah. And that's all communication amongst the driver that, or manager or IOE, the lead driver. Or if it's two buses, it might be you two just chatting with each other and say, hey, you have the Justin, you got the band, I got the crew, so you'll probably be closest to the door, and I'm going to be over here. But Justin will probably tell you, I'm about the same way. I've done this long enough now. I I know I'm going to do just as easy when I start. When I finish, I'm going to be just as easy. Right. You know, because I, I have this now. You know what I'm saying? So if you're backing up into a spot, um, take me through a backup. You're not going to be doing a lot of movement. You're pretty much going to set yourself up. I want to set up like if I'm looking at, they say, back into a dock or back into a slot. I'm looking at it before I pull into it. So I, the least turns I have to make in pulling up back and forth is the best way. You know, I try to pull up where I don't have to back up one time. Yeah. Get part of it. I don't have, I don't want this pulling up, back it up, and straighten it up. Look at it before you start, and the less turns you make to get there. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you can swing out wide and back up, maybe just do it on one turn. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I look for. The space is about, sometimes these places just change tight. Yeah. But if you look at it, Somebody's been there the day before, so you can get there. Right. But just look, the best way to do it with just least turns as you have to and stop it and pull it up. Right. So if, if we w once we back in, what's what's our next move on the setup? Since you know, set your bus up, try to get it level. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Main engine's get, still running and you're... Right. Get yeah. you get flied out, do all that stuff. Is the... Make Still idling while we're doing this? Yes. Now, right here, something else. Like some artists, you shut that bus off, it wakes them up. Sometimes, it's according to who it is. 
I'll let I'll just put it on fast idle until they get up. Right. So yeah, basically it's boiling down. We're accommodating and serving the client. So Mr. Klein, what what do you need me to do? And what what do you so Justin, we we parked up, let's uh so we've leveled. Now at this time when we're we're you and Tommy are both parked up. Uh, I guess it's what you do. You plug into shore, or or what are you doing now? Well, uh, let's let's circle back for a second to the the backing okay. backing into the spot. I sometimes you get into a bus, or your bus gets into a habit because those things are constantly learning on what you're doing. Uh, so when you back in, I've always been taught, and that's the way I do it to. to till today uh is when you go to back into a spot say you pull underneath somewhere at an arena or outside at an arena you set yourself up to back up don't just go from drive to reverse hit that neutral button let it let that transmission come to neutral oh. and then when to reverse because if you don't sometimes uh that bus will kind of just lurch backwards. Mm. It'll, it'll have a slight lurch and that's also going to wake your clients up. Uh, so just always get into a good practice of doing that. That's a really good point. And so you're, my foot's on the brake and I've pressed neutral and I wait a second and then I pre press reverse. Right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. And then, I never like my one of my big things was when I was backing up. I learned this early on. Uh, I never depressed the fuel pedal for backing. I let idle always back me up unless Absolutely. I was on a hill. Then then it was just trying to find out that perfect little smooth slow because I I found out early that it's better to idle into a pole than, than to go too fast. It's like shit. I didn't see that damn thing. Yeah. I don't think I told that on myself. <laughs> just, <laughs> but i learned it really quick when i first started driving so yeah oh I that. Uh, as far as as far as setting up uh you get there you 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 level out you set up uh if you're underneath at an arena you're probably gonna have shore power yeah they're probably going to want you to cut your generator off as soon as possible because 90% of your arenas that are underneath parking yep. have intakes that go into the venue that is sucking up diesel exhaust fumes. Good point. Okay. Uh, you really can't control the shutting down of the generator, the little rumble that it has. Mm -hmm. Yes. It may or may not wake your clients up. Uh, but Hindsight's twenty twenty. Those roof airs are going to kick in pretty quick, so it does cancel out a little bit. Right. So uh, for the roof airs to kick in first before we kill engine, right? Well, well, yeah. Wait for all that to kick back on. Right. Sometimes some buses that you get don't have. If your generator's still running and you plug the shore power, your shore power is not going to override your generator until it's uh -huh. not in, until you shut that Jenny off. Mm, good point. So, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a devil's advocate you play there. Yep. Whether or not you shut down generator and let the shore power take over. Well, in a case like that, couldn't you leave the main motor running, put on the bus air, then shut off, the generator and the roof airs will kick in and now shut off the main motor. I'm just throwing it out there. You could. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you're still, is if you're parked up and set up with a generator running and the main engine running, you're still going to get that engine shutter from the generator. Yeah, that's true too. But you, but the people in the, in the bunks wouldn't lose airflow because the airflow would still be coming from, main bus airflow they'll lose the generator airflow which was from the roof airs they'll definitely lose that but the, at least with the bus air in this case scenario they would still be getting a flow of air then once that shore power was plugged in now i kill the generator they feel the shutter of the generator kill 
and then, but they're still getting air. And then once those roof airs kick in, they get that flow. Now I can kill the bus air or the, yeah, the bus. And that mentally on their end, they, that lets them know if they do happen to wake up when that generator shuts off, they know something didn't go wrong. They'll have airflow. They still have power. Yep. And they notice that the, uh, the roof airs come right back on. Yeah. So they know something didn't go wrong and they don't have to worry about if they're going to have air today. It might be I'm awake for 30 seconds and now I'm sleeping again. Right. I get it. So, all right. So we're in the venue where Tommy, I'm, I'm going to run to you. You guys just hooked the shore power and stuff. Now, now what's happening? Well, you know, you main thing you do is you do your cleaning. Mm. Like Justin said, you dump your trash. Wipe everything, clean your toilet, bathrooms, and all that. Uh, you know, that's pretty much what I end up doing. Then I'll get out of everybody's way, you know. And, and that's an important point, too, is staying out of everybody's way. Well, you know, they there do their job, you know, then. And I just try to stay out of everyone's way. But yeah. and I don't leave us unattended, though. You make sure you do your cleaning, mopping, whatever you need to do. Right. Before leave you don't just jump in the van and go to the hotel you got to take care of your stuff right like the trash and the white right. etc and right. make, making sure that everybody is good before you actually jump in the van and go back so we jumped in the van we're going back when when is it that you do your homework to see like i don't know say just pretend we're in chicago and the next venue is in indianapolis when do you do that homework for that's hotel? What? I may do that while I'm unwinding at the hotel. As soon oh. as I get and, and I, if Justin were on a tour, would you you guys talk about that too? Or you most definitely probably that the route we're gonna run, uh about the parking. Yep. And, you know, try to communicate with whoever you're with, you know. Right. So that you uh, guys are all on the same page and like say like Justin leaves early because he has the band and you leave later and let's say it's a three bus tour and Tommy's with uh you know Brian Fraser and Justin's got the band but we know Justin's got a bus call at 10 o'clock or 11 so you guys would still talk about the routes that you were taking out right we so always try to run the same routes yeah in case something happens to one of the other buses perfect so rookies listen to this because this is good information. So Justin leaves early, he bolts, whatever, and maybe he's going straight to the hotel and Tommy and Brian are going uh, straight to the venue. So our leaving or departure in, in there, you and Brian are, are leaving, you're doing the same technique. You already pre-planned so you know how you're getting out of Chicago. And then once you get on the highway, yeah, that's where you make up your time. And yep. then you pull into Indianapolis and we do it all over again. Yep. And a lot of times I communicate with whoever say, just for instance, like I was I had the band on the my morning jacket. Yep. Well, I leave a couple hours before Mike and the uh the other driver. Right. But I always communicate. I'd always call and say, you know, we're going this way tonight. Yeah. And then I was leaving, I'd tell him everything's looking good or whatever. You know, Mike yeah. would always call. Him. And like since Justin left early and say he came across off of I-65, there was a big accident or something. It, it's a, a delay. He, Justin, you would probably call Tommy or let him know, hey, heads up, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd call him and let him know, hey, we're at dead stop on I-65 here's the way around it i've done looked at it i can't get around it because i'm not to that exit yeah. but you can you can take i-55 and go down and come back around this way see i love that kind of teamwork I, I love when you really everyone is working cohesively to accomplish the end goal which is taking care of the client that tcc portion of this well y'all what you gotta think too huh? maybe one of them buses break down, you got another bus to at least stop and pick them up. Right, because you're on the you both took the same route. It's not right. like everybody go splitting and going taking different ways to get there. Right. Yeah. Good good point. So 
say Justin is late and Tommy's the first one in and there's things for parking or whatever, I guess you would let Tom, let Justin know, hey, they changed up the parking. You guys are going to be parking here. Sure. Uh, we're already set up. But and then Justin might go, well, I'm going to they want to go to the hotel first and then I got to take them back. Blah, And that's all communication. That's all um, basically all everyone being on the same page for what's going on. You've got to work together. Yeah. So let's go. Let, let's pretend the Indy was last show. Um, you're dropping them off at an airport hotel after the show. Justin probably leaves early because they wanted to. I, somehow I made you the band driver, Justin. So <laughs> Justin has to drop them off at the airport and then he's headed back to Nashville. And Tommy, you guys have to wait till like one o'clock or whatever and drop the guys off. So now we're headed back. When are you guys doing your punch list and sending that stuff into Lewis? The entire tour. Yeah. Perfect answer. Yeah. I've got already started for when I get in a month from now. Awesome. Yeah. I don't write it down now. I could forget it. Right. So if something comes up, you need to write it down. Absolutely. We're, oh. We've got. Nine million different things going on on a daily basis between right. between what we do with drivers, what we do at the venue, and all the information we get from tour managers, lead drivers, whoever they may be. Right. Throw bus problems in that need to be looked at when it gets back to remember all that. Yeah. That's that's one thing I I, I strongly advise other drivers to do is keep a running punch list yeah. and I don't care if your bus that you're going to be on next week yeah. or done with that bus for the next six months. I don't care how small or how big or how minor you might think it is. Write it down. Yeah. At least it can be looked at. Yeah. Good point. And then I guess you'll, you'll send Lewis an ETA like Absolutely. just getting in early and Tommy, you guys would be coming in late and that way the shop's able to schedule things and say, Hey, I'm getting ready to leave out on such and such a tour in two days. So you guys need to know, blah, blah, blah. That's the thing I do Neville. Mm -hmm. As soon as I drop, as soon as I drop a group, I'll find me a place to pull over mm -hmm. and do a dummy check. Go ahead and pull my sheets, comforters, in case they left something, you don't know how many times I've been called. Hey, could you come back for this yeah. to that? Before I get out of town, I always pull over, pull my sheets, yeah. make sure they've not left nothing in their bunks and stuff like that. Now, that's what I do. It, you know, I don't wait till I get to the shop. I know when I used to fuel up just before I got into Nashville. That's when by that time I had my trash completely full. Right. I at that last truck stop is when I would the bus wouldn't have anything. I mean I'd empty the fridge into the garbage bag and literally leave it there at the that truck stop. So she's coming in pretty naked with the with the sheets up front and makes it easier for the cleaning staff. Yeah. But I do the same thing. Yeah. You too, Justin. Yes, sir. You're on a little different of a thing because you are you're you're a long term lease there. Yeah, but still they, you know, I still do the same thing because you know, your artists are are just adult children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. For lack of a better term. Yeah. They're they're in after them all the time, yeah. Yeah, they're in their snacks and they just leave them open in the cabinets or and you know damn good and well that those chips or almonds or whatever after being open all week aren't going to be any good next week. Yeah, true. And that's key for bugs to get in your bus. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. So I get rid of it all. Any perishables like old milk or milk that's going to go out of date. Yep. Anything like that gets chunked. Awesome. So we made it back to the yard. The bus is clean. It's ready for Mandy. And uh, we go home. Yep. That's right. Get ready to do it all. Unless you're Justin and you're here, and then the minute I see him walk by the office, what are you doing? Can you run? Uh, running. <laughs> running away. 
<laughs> Can you take a you mind uh, grabbing a trailer and going? Yeah, that's yeah, that's how it works. Anyways, this was perfect, guys. I'm sure I'll, I'll, we'll get responses and people say, "Can you talk about this?" Can you? We, we'll probably have another one. But I really appreciate you taking the time in your respective cities on your respective tours and uh, sharing some of this information with myself and uh, with our fellow drivers, especially the new ones that are coming on board with whatever company. But uh, sure. love you guys. Appreciate your time and uh, travel safe. Love you too, Bye. brother. Pre the opportunity. I appreciate All it. Right.